Hello, dear students. I'm happy to welcome you back to our new lecture. And today we're going to talk about presentations. Firstly, let's pay attention to our plan. Main topic will be presentations. I will give you some useful phrases. Then we will look at the grammar. Today we are discussing continuous tenses. And of course, we're going to practice our pronunciation a little bit. So, presentations. Here I prepared for you almost 50 useful phrases that you can use on a daily basis and uh, doesn't matter if you are making your presentation online or if you are making it uh, offline like uh, your annual report for a big audience. Doesn't matter, you can use it and be in a favor. Firstly, uh, let's uh, remind a structure of our presentations, you should start it always with welcoming your audience. It can be done in uh, such ways, like good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and welcome to my presentation. My name is, and I am, then you should name your job title, at, and you are naming your company name. And starting with uh, such phrases like, the topic of my presentation is, name it. Today, I'd like to talk to you about, and also name it. So, the second in our presentation will be given overview. It's uh, just a short sentence where you should uh, name the main purpose of your presentation. I'm going to focus on, or look at, or deal with the three main points. If you want uh, to divide your presentation into stages or points, you use uh, uh, this phrase. I have divide my presentation into three main parts. First of all, or firstly, but uh, honestly saying it's better to use first of all, I'll talk about and name the first part. Then second, we'll look at. I know that it's also possible to use secondly, but it will sound more informal, but uh, we don't need this in our business English. And the last one will be like, and finally, I'll explain, show you, or tell about something. You shouldn't uh, forget about timing. And it's needed to mention that my presentation will take about a number of minutes. The next will be questions. Uh, there is two variants, like when you gonna answer on questions during your presentation, or you can ask your colleagues uh, to make a questions after you finish. There will be a plenty of time for questions at the end of my presentation. So you are asking them to postpone and ask everything in the end. I appreciate it if you could leave any question you may have until the end of my presentation. Or if it's okay to you to interrupt, you can just say, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to interrupt me at the any time. And then will be main part, where you should introduce your first point. It will be like, I'd like to begin by telling you something or showing you. Uh, also, let's start with, oh, so let's get started. If we want to finish the topic, we should use such phrases as so, that covers everything I want to say about. Or, that concludes my first, second points. We use this phrase when we want to make a short summary for every part of our presentation. And continuing with another, then after summary, you can say this phrase. It means that you go further. Uh, now let's move on to my next topic, which is, and name it. Or let's turn now to, or just, uh, you can say, uh, moving on to. 
If you have in your presentation some photos, spidergram, tables, you should make a reference. It can be done with. As you can see on this chart, take a look at this chart or this graphic clearly shows and explain what's going on on that graphic. This graph highlights the importance of. Let's go to the next block. It will be going into details. We can done it with such phrases as let me expand on this point. It means that you want to continue to uh, talk about this subject more uh, deeper. I'd like to elaborate on this point for a few minutes. Reminding your audience why the topic is relevant or important with the phrases like, as I said at the beginning, you also making references, but uh, uh, to your own uh, phrases or words. This relates to what I, I was saying earlier. This ties in with what I said at the start of my talk or presentation. Uh, the last one is very beautiful, this ties. Remember, place it and use, it will impress your audience. Then we should, before finishing, summarize everything that was said before. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. We looked at three main points. First, I showed you or I spoke, spoke about, then we looked at, and finally I explained or told you about something. And making concluding. To conclude, I'd like to say, or before I finished, I'd like to leave you with one final thought, thanking the audience and inviting them to ask questions. Thank you very much for your attention and time. Uh, you can also say thank you for listening, or if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them right now. Uh, great we are. I guess now we can continue with our grammar part. Today, as I said previous, uh, we're going to discuss continuous tenses. Uh, the first one, it's uh, the simplest uh, present continuous. Uh, it has its own markers like now or these days. We use it to show the action at the moment of speaking or temporary or plant actions. Now, uh, let's describe the structure. The structure is the next. On the first place, always subject. Then, to be verb. In our case, it's I am, he, she is, we are. Then will be verb with the ending ink to show uh, that the action is in the progress. If we want to make a negative form, then uh, we use subject on the first place. The second place will be taken by to be verb. Then we are adding part not to show the negative form. And uh, then the same will be verb with ink ending. If we want to make a question, then we put our to be verb on the first place, and the second will be for a subject, and the third for a verb with ending ink. So, use of present continuous. Being in the middle of doing something at the time of speaking, it means that action taking place uh, just right now. Carla is preparing for briefing, so we are showing that she is in the process. I am looking for Mr. Miller's phone number. Also process, because she's doing it right in the moment. The next will be action that are taking place for a limited period or only for some time. Mr. Thompson is in a sick leave. That's why I'm doing his job. 
Three temporary employees are helping out this month. It means that all these actions are not happening regularly. They are just uh, happen right now for some short or not short period of time. The third will be the arranged future actions. It means that we are talking about some action that will uh, happen in the future and it's already planned. Like, I am meeting Mrs. Walker at 5 p.m. or Bob is doing overtime tomorrow. Our second dance will be past continuous. It has no any markers, but we know that we can use it to show the process in the past that was interrupted by a present simple. And uh, the second usage will be for the process in the past with mentioned period of time or process in the past with a precise time mentioned. The structure, subject, then verb to be in the past form like was or were, and uh, the third uh, placed in sentence will be taken by verb with ending ink. If we want to make a negative form, we put a subject, we add to it verb to be in the past form, then uh, uh, part not, verb with ink ending. If we are making question, then verb to be will be on the first place, and uh, after it, subject will follow, and the last place, as usual, verb with ink ending. Let's take a look at some peculiarities of usage. So, we used past continuous where we are talking about action that had taken place at a certain moment in the past. Like, uh, at 2 o'clock, Carla was preparing the contract. Yesterday, I was looking for the Mr. Miller's phone number. It means that uh, that action is being in the middle of doing something at a certain time in the past. Second will be action that happen simultaneously. It means in a one moment, like Clara was preparing for a presentation, Tom was showing the customer around. It means that all uh, two actions are happening in a one moment. But it can be in a different rooms, it doesn't matter. They are happening in a one moment. While Sarah was looking for the documents, I was keeping the customer on the line. The third situation when we used uh, past continuous, it's when we are being in the middle of an action when another action is happening. Like, I was sitting in a meeting when my mobile suddenly ran. When I came in, John was playing solitaire. So it means that action taking place over a longer period of time in the past, when suddenly or rapidly another shorter action, I should pay attention to it, shorter action sat in. That's why for first part of our sentence, in the first example, we used past continuous to show that action was prolonged and then the second action that was shorter, it is showed by ran, the second form of the verb, which means that we used past simple. Great we are! Next will be a future continuous time. Uh, we use it for the process in the future that uh, interrupted by a present simple or a process in the future with mentioned period of time or with precise time mentioned. It's uh, almost the same like in the previous variants. And uh, our structure of sentence will be the next. First place, always subject. Then verb to be in a future form. Will or shall. As we were talking about it on, in a first lecture, it's better to use will all the time. 
and the third place uh, will be taken by verb with ink ending. If we want to make a negative form, then one more time, first place subject, second verb to be in a future form, then we add part not, and uh, the last one will be verb with ending ink. If we are making a question, we put a verb to be on the first place, then it follows by subject, by a part B, and verb with ink form. About of peculiarities of usage, uh, future continuous, oh, not a lot, let's say honestly. Uh, I want to tell you about future one, which we use with uh, phrase going to. It is used for conclusions or decisions that made for the future that was derived from analyzing the present situation. It's like our costs were too high last year. This year we are going to reduce our costs or we are going to recruit more staff. All actions are planned, that's why we can just use going to. Now, I guess we can a little bit uh, practice our pronunciation because the clear speech is one of the most important aspects of business English. Let's start with a simple one. I go first, you continue after me, and the second time will be quicker. I scream, you scream, we all scream for the ice cream. One more time. I scream, you scream, we all scream for the ice cream. Great. Second. Nevertheless, the never-ending thoughtlessness of never thinking thing. Nevertheless, the never-ending thoughtlessness of never thinking thing. Third will be, you know New York, you need New York, you know you need unique New York. You know New York, you need New York, you know you need unique New York. I hope you are doing well with repeating after me. The next one will be longer that we already discussed in the first lecture, but it works very well for practicing our P and B, that's why we will repeat it one more time. Better people picked a pack of pickled peppers. A pack of pickled peppers better people picked. If better people picked a pack of pickled peppers, there is the pack of pickled peppers better people picked. One more time. Better people picked a pack of pickled peppers. A pack of pickled peppers better people picked. If better people picked a pack of pickled peppers, where is the pack of pickled peppers better people picked? And last one for you will be our favorite Betty. Betty bought her, bought some butter, but she said the butter is bitter. If I put it in my butter, it will make my butter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my butter better. So it was better. Betty bought her, bought a bit of better butter. Last time. Uh, Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter is bitter. If I put it in my butter, it will make my butter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my butter better. So it was better Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. Great we are. I'm happy and satisfied. Hope you are too. And also you should one more time to repeat uh, these phrases at home. Try to do it as fast as possible. And the last one is our home task. Today I will ask you to create your own uh, plan of presentation. It shouldn't be done the whole presentation, but just a plan. Start with introduction, continue with leading into main part, uh, show when you want uh, to make reference and so on. Everything that we've learned today. And as usual, make five sentences for present continuous, past continuous, and future continuous. That's, that's it. That's all for today. I am happy that you enjoyed me, and see you soon. Bye-bye.